Hello and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spann. On this edition, Youth Volunteer Challenge continues. Bowie Bay Sox show their appreciation. And the Navy commemorates the War of 1812. These stories and more. But first, the Kimbrough Ambulatory Medical Center welcomed a new commander this week. In ceremonies on McLaughlin Parade Field, Colonel Leon Moore has turned over command of the Med Act to Colonel Danny Jagab. Presiding over the ceremony, Brigadier General Joseph Carvalho, the Commanding General of the Northern Regional Medical Command. There has been an Army medicine presence here since 1917, the year this post was founded. Despite being downgraded to an outpatient facility in the last BRAC process, during Colonel Moore's tenure, the Medoc picked up a lot of additional responsibility. And our access to care, including surgical care with some of the best operating room utilization in the entire MedCom, our provider productivity, and patient appointments with their assigned provider or provider team consistently ranks within the top five organizations of all size within MedCom. Colonel Jagab began his Army career more than 20 years ago right here at Fort Meade. My first duty assi assignment was here 24 years ago at Kimbrough Army Community Hospital. Can you believe that some of the same staff are still here? Back then I was the inpatient dietitian. We had inpatients here and our commander was Colonel Dale Block. As a young lieutenant, I learned from Colonel Block through example how to take care of patients and staff alike. In a related story under Colonel Moore's leadership, Kimro recently opened a new $20 million suite of operating rooms. MeTV filed this report. Three, two, one. <laughs> Project lead Lieutenant Colonel Glenda Swenson says Walter Reed and Bethesda are more tertiary facilities and the National Capital Region needed more outpatient surgery centers. To the uh, interior decorating queen, uh, <laughs> queen of the OR, uh, Linda Swenson, thank you very much thank for very much. All, of, all of your work. So, oh, thank you. Thank you. The new operating suites include state-of-the-art equipment, including a nurse station control center, wireless monitors, video conferencing, and more. There's 320 degrees rotation capability within, within here, and um, because of the, the oxygen suction tubing that's in the ceiling that you don't see, so that's why you can't go 360 degrees. According to Kimbrough officials, use of the clinic has grown by more than 30 percent in less than two years and is one of the most utilized surgical centers in the U.S. Army Medical Command. A reminder from MWR, the Summer Youth Volunteer Challenge continues through August 10th. Kids can register and complete volunteer hours to earn iPods, gift cards, and more. To find out what volunteer jobs are available, contact the ACS Volunteer Coordinator at 301-677-4128. In other news, all year long, Fort McHenry and the entire community are celebrating the 200th anniversary of the War of 1812. It all culminates with a twilight tattoo ceremony on August 18th. That date marks the first major naval battle for a young U.S. Navy winning enduring fame for Old Ironsides, the USS Constitution. Navy folks here at the Defense Media Activity right here on Fort Meade have put together a series of reports on the War of 1812. In this first part, a look at the ships themselves. The new frigates were to be 175 feet at the waterline, larger than the European frigates, carrying larger cannon while not sacrificing speed. They are superior to any European frigate, and if others should be in the enemy's company, our frigates can always lead ahead and never be obliged to go into action, but on their own terms. The goal of the design of Humphrey's frigates was to empower them in single ship-on-ship -ship action, but also to give them the ability to outsail any heavily cannoned ship of the line. While the Congress of 1794 only cared about responding to Algerian Corsairs, Humphreys intended his ships to be capable of engaging the European powers of the time if the need arose. President Washington approved the proposal for ships sent to him by Congress. He was also given a list of names to pick from for the ships. The first five frigates were the first five options on the list. United States, Constellation, Constitution, Congress, and President. The last was later named Chesapeake. In 1797, the first of the frigates, USS United States, was launched in Philadelphia. She would be followed by the Constellation and the Constitution a few months later. We'll have more from the Navy on the War of 1812 on the next Mead Week. Meanwhile, the Bowie Bay Sox are offering discounted tickets on Military Appreciation Nights July 25th and August 15th. The Bay Sox will donate $3 to MWR for every ticket sold online. Just go to the Bowie Bay Sox website and enter the promo code MWR. Until then, I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at MeTV and the Fort Meade Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.